Hello and welcome to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel where of course we're giving you the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. It's a pleasure to have you back for a second upload in two days. Honestly, the the form I'm on at the moment is incredible. I'm managing to get two uploads in two days, hopefully more to come on the channel as well. But today we're talking signings, we're talking another transfer. It's a similar video to my one on Imbai Diagna who as of about uh, half an hour ago, has recently signed for West Bromwich Albion on a loan deal from Galatasaray. Not sure about the clause with the buying in. We'll have to find out about that very soon. However, this is another signing, who is uh, OK Yokosulu. I guess you could say he is OK. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just sort of had to do that. But we're going to be talking about what he could bring to West Bromwich Albion. We're going to be talking about what he couldn't bring to West Bromwich Albion and why he might not, might not be such a good fit. We've got your questions as well. You guys have been sending in a few questions. You've also been taking part in a few polls over on my Twitter account, which you can go and follow. Here it is in this magical corner over here. It's the Baggies podcast on Twitter as well. So make sure you go and follow that and make sure you're going and keeping up with all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion over there. But without further ado, we're going to get straight into this about OK Yokosulu. But make sure the podcast is coming out on Sunday. Of course, this is the Baggies podcast. We do a pack podcast every Monday. Did I say Sunday? Well, it's every Monday. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about um, everything to do with Albion. We're going to review the Fulham game, preview the Sheffield game. But we've also got a very special guest. Now, here he is. It's Mark antoine Fortune. Here we are having a nice conversation about his time at the Albion. That's going to be in Sunday's podcast. So you don't want to miss that. That's going to be available from 5pm on Monday. So make sure you go and check that out. But without further ado, let's get into this this special video on a potential new signing, OK, Yokosulu. So who is he? Well, for starters, I've been butchering his name in the intro already. His name is actually OK Yokosulu. Yokosulu. So we're going to say that Yokosulu is his name. Now, whether he likes it or not, that's his name. So he's 26 years old. He's a Turkish international with 29 caps who plays for Celta Vigo in La Liga. His former clu clubs only include Turkish Super League clubs, Catalina Spor and Trasbonsor. So he's played at a decent level, uh, he's played in La Liga, and he's played for a Celta Vigo side who like to dominate the ball, but also haven't potentially, in his time at Celta Vigo, haven't really done very well. They've just about survived relegation both years, finishing in 17th, which is the same as if you finish 17th in the Premier League. That's just one, one place above the drop zone. So he's played for a struggling side, we have to say that. So that means we can relate him to this situation that we find ourselves in in West Brom. It gives us a greater representative. But with, in order to get a feel of what sort of player OK Yokoslu is, we have to look at the stats. And I thought we could go for this season, because he has played a bit this season. But then again, I think he hasn't played a full season this season. It's obviously halfway through. So I thought, well, we'll use the next set of data, the next best set of data that we've got, which is the season that has just come, which is the one um, last season, which is the 1920 season where he played for uh, still Celta Vigo, they finished 17th in the table. So that's the best sort of representative of what sort of player he is, is last season where he's played a full season and he's managed to show us exactly what he can do. So let's start with a few, we've got, well, there's, it's, it's all stats basically, all stats, all stats that are going to lead to us showing what sort of player he is, what sort of things he can bring to West Brom side. So this is what he could bring to West Brom side. West Brom side. So he completed 882 passes last season, which is the second highest out of the midfield at, at Celta Vigo. When I say the second highest out of midfielders from Celta Vigo, that's a stat that comes up a few times because he's, he's second to this one person. And that is Rafina, who has gone on to play for Paris Saint-Germain. So let's just take it as with, uh, you know, without Rafina, he would have been the best in that midfield area last season. Only one player has really been topping him, and that's Rafina, who was his midfield partner. So 882 passes, 83 you know percent of his passes were completed, which is a pretty decent stat in terms of in terms of pass accuracy over an entire season. He played 432 short passes, which are under 15 yards, 337 medium length passes, which are between 15 and 30 yards, and then 79 long balls. So 247 passes were made whilst under pressure by opponents. You can see that whilst he's um, picking the ball up, he's liking to play it short and medium length, not liking to lump it long. So he's a cultured footballer, is what we're learning, is that he likes to play those short and simple passes between opponents. You could argue that's a bit counterproductive. However, I would say that it shows a sign of a footballer who knows what he's doing. He's not just getting that ball and panicking and lumping it long. He's clearly p composed. So he's made 247 passes whilst under pressure from opponents, which means that he's picking up that ball, opponents are rushing onto him, and he's still completing those passes um, 
and pass them off to opponents whilst he's under pressure. So it shows that he's got that sort of um, football brain where he sees a player coming towards him and he goes, no, right, we're going to be composed in the ball here. Uh, most type of balls, so you can have an, a low ball, which is straight along the ground. Uh, you can have a slightly higher ball, which is uh, just above the ground. Or you can have a high ball, which is up to shoulder height. So he plays his most amount of passes are high balls. So he likes to sort of find those little switch passes and those little passes over to the fullback, those little passes over to the perhaps a more attacking midfielder. So he's obviously quite a cultured footballer. He's got a good range of passing. He likes to pass short, long, short, medium, and not so long perhaps, but he likes to play between those sorts of ranges. You can see the sort of area he occupies in the stats we're going to go through in a minute. Um, so he's made the second most high, second highest tackles made in the midfield. Obviously Rafina topping that stat. Um, oh, okay, Jokas, Jokas Lu coming second. So he got those second most passes made uh, in Celta Vigo's midfield last season. That's pretty decent. Bear in mind he was like holding that midfield, Rafina, and I think Fran Beltran just in front in that Celta Vigo midfield. Mostly uh, those tackles are coming in the defensive and middle third. So we're now talking about the sort of areas that he occupies. He occupies that defensive, that middle third, which obviously help him to know where he likes to play positionally. So he's obviously not really progressing into that attacking third, which is a good thing because we want to hold a midfielder who's going to sit between those centre-backs and provide good cover. And he clearly at the moment is proving that. So um, he rarely gets dribble pass 19 times, which is the lowest out of any of the regular midfielders in Celta Vigo. So that's more, you know, less times than Rafina, less times than Fran Beltran and any other of the midfielders. Fair, yeah, the defenders have been dribbled past less, but that's to be expected as they are defenders and not midfielders and there's, you know, less chance of them being ran past. So you've got the second, you know, you've got the most, uh, least uh, least dribbles past in the Sato Vigo midfield. Um, 81 pressures won, which is mainly in the defensive and midfield third. So when he's pressing on people and winning the ball off them, those are in the defensive and that middle third, which helped, which help him really to... Um, to help us to show where he likes to operate in that field. So that defensive and that middle third helps him to win the ball in those sorts of areas rather than pressing really high up the pitch. You've seen Livermore do it a few times. He just runs towards the defence. He doesn't do that. He stays back and his pressures are won when the pressures can be won in that midfield and defensive third. 17 interceptions, which is the most in the midfield for Celta Vigo. So you're getting an idea of what sort of player he is. He likes to tackle, can pass quite well, but also... Um, you know, isn't like is you know he's likely to always pick up the ball and likes to read the game well. So he's making the interceptions the most out of any of the midfielders. The combined tackles and interceptions lead him to be the second most out of the regular midfielders. Again, second in that midfield for Celta Vigo. So that's obviously a very decent stat for him. The second most touches in the midfit in the Vigo midfield, uh, mostly in that defensive and midfield third. So you're learning that he doesn't like to really stray out of his comfort zone. He likes to stay in there, he's milling around, providing a good shield for the defence, so he's not straying too far away from that, which I think we're going to like here at West Brom. I think we need somebody to shadow that defence. He's also got the fifth most successful dribbles in the Vigo team, so he's obviously ferrying that ball around that defensive in middle third, and he's obviously taking that ball and he's, he's ferrying it off, he's passing it off, and he's doing a good job in that sort of area. So he's obviously, you know, the fifth, the fifth most successful dribbles, he's only coming below the attackers. So the attackers and Rafina, of course. Rafina, in most departments, it was better than OK Jokas, Jokas Lu last season. But that's a testament to how good Jokas Lu is. Because Rafina obviously is causing prob obviously caused problems and, and went to PSG, la PSG last summer and is becoming a regular for them. So he's obviously a quality football brother of Thiago, Liverpool player. So he's the highest out of, the, out of those attempting 20 or more successful dribbles. So, you know, those who are... Success, successful in in completing their dribbles, he who who he them who attempt um attempt those twenty or more dribbles, he's the most successful. Also, the highest um that won sixty six percent of aerial duels, only one centre back in the Vigo team, one player, and that's one centre back, one more in the Vigo team. So he's obviously strong in the air. Uh, he's obviously causing those problems in the air, and he's providing that good shield and good cover for the centre backs. Uh, the team he's playing in a team that dominates the ball, so they've had an average of fifty-one percent possession last season, and um, you know it doesn't doesn't sh it, you know it doesn't show much about the Celta Vigo team that possession stat, but it does show that they um they don't they don't potentially have 
uh, don't potentially lose the ball a lot, so they're in occupation of the ball. But they don't score many goals, and that's going to be helpful in knowing what sort of level he's at. So he's playing in that team that dominate the ball, but don't particularly score. Um, so he's obviously providing good defensive cover, and he's showing uh, that he's prominent in those sorts of areas of the field, and that's good to know about him. So that's why he might be so might be quite good. He's clearly that player that likes to sit in front of the back four, ferrying that ball around, winning those aerial draws, intercepting and then passing off, intercepting and then passing off. Very functional player in front of that back four. So that's the sort of player that you can get to know about OK Yokoslu. Yok so here's why OK Yokoslu might not work for West Brom. So as we did with him by Diagna, we talked about why he's good, and here's why OK Yokoslu is not so good. So he's not much of a created, it, creative threat. Don't expect that from him. Don't expect him to be passing the ball in that final third and cutting open the opposition defence. Just don't expect that from him. The lowest goal and assist per 90 out for midfielders is Celta. So you can see what sort of player he is. He sits in front of that back four. Don't expect him to be making those penetrating passes through opposition defences. That's just not what he's about. So if you're expecting that, please just don't get your hopes up about that sort of thing because it's just not going to happen in that sort of respect, if not very often, really. He has the lowest passes into the penalty area out for midfields at, at Celta as well. Again, backing up the point that he's not particularly um, progressive in that respect. However, he does like to make the progressive passes. So he doesn't like to so he doesn't like to make those progressive passes, but he does like to get the ball forward. However, a progressive pass is defined as ten yards forward towards the opposition goal, and he doesn't make many of them. He has the third most intercepted passes in the Celta team. So he's obviously tr passing a lot, or he's not passing a particular quality. So people are intercepting them quite easily. Or he's, but evidence doesn't really suggest that he's playing those risky passes, whereas he's playing quite safe passes. So if he's losing them, maybe his pass accuracy, he's just making a lot of passes and lots of them going right. You could read a lot into this, but I'm not really sure what to read into that. But just the stat for you, he's the, we've got the third most intercepted passes in the entire Celta Vigo team. He's got the least shot creation chances out of everyone, excluding defenders and goalkeepers. So he's obviously that defensive midfielder. That's just basically what it proves. However, there's nothing too damning about uh, OK Jokoslu. It just describes the fact that he's got that um, midfield ingenuity to sit in front of that back four to cause um, opposition attackers more to think about than what we've got at the moment. I think Livermore and Sawyers, they're quite easily ghosted past in that midfield, whereas I think this guy, he's, he's a tough cookie. I don't think he's going to be ghosted past. I don't think people are going to walk past him with any form of ease. I think he's got that sort of uh, brain and that, that sort of power to keep opposition defensive away from him. I think he's going to be a difficult player to play against and I think he's got that sort of credibility as we've seen by the stats he's clearly intercepting the ball a lot he's clearly causing a lot of problems for opposition opposition attack I just think he is the player that we need I think I, I, I'll be, be honest with you before I um, did my research it was quite hard to tell what sort of a player he was now I can see I now I'm aware of what sort of um what sort of player we've got here but Let's find out what you guys think, because obviously your opinion is just as important as mine. We're all West Brom fans. So here's what you guys said. So I just said, I'm hoping to record a video about OK Yokoslu for our YouTube channel soon. What do you make of the potential signing? Uh, also, if you have any questions regarding him, I'll answer them in the video. So here's your poll. So you said 96% absolutely sign him and 4% not what we need. So it's clear that you guys think OK Yokoslu is the sort of guy we need. And... Uh, we have a question coming from Ian Dickinson who says, will he sit in front of the back four and provide some grip in midfield like Jakob, but can pass? And that, your answer to that, Ian, is yes. That is exactly what he will provide. He'll provide some good passing uh, passing out the defence, out of that back line and passing towards midfield and getting it onto the ball. He's not particularly creative, but he'll give the ball to more creative players like Pereira, Dean Garner, and players like that. And then he's going to sit in front of that back four, provide a bit of grit in midfield. It'll be difficult to get past It'll be difficult to get the ball off. So, in answer to that, Ian, yes, I think he is a Jakob sort of player, but he's got that passing accuracy that uh, is going to allow him to create um, those sort of those sort of, of opportunities for a more attacking players to take on the ball and cause problems. So, thank you to everyone who's got involved in that video, but that does bring us to the end. Let me know in the comments section whether you think OK Jokoslu is going to be a good signing for the Albion. If not, let me know why not. If you do think so, let me know why you think so. But... If you are new to the channel, 
hang on, before you go, make sure you're subscribing and make sure you're dropping uh, the bell icon as well to make sure that you know exactly when we're uploading because obviously that's quite important. If you know when we're uploading, you'll be able to watch. You'll be the first here. And make sure you're dropping a like on the video as well. It's greatly appreciated. My Twitter is in the description, whatever you call it below. And make sure you're going and listen to the podcast on Sunday. As I mentioned, Mark Antoine Fortune coming on the podcast, which is incredible news for me and a fantastic milestone for the podcast. So without further ado, that brings us to the end of the, this video on OK Yokus Lou. Let me know if you think he's going to be a good signing, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.